Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. Before I get started, let me once again say thank you to our audience, you, for subscribing, supporting, and commenting on our videos. Whether the comments are pleasant or unpleasant to read, we appreciate them and we read them all. Believe me, I do. We are climbing day by day and are looking to crack a 1,000 subscribers soon enough. Help us get there. Share our videos with your friends. Every little bit of it helps. In the meantime, please remember to follow us on IG, Facebook, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast and on X at Come On Now Pod. Now, let me get into it. I never thought I would be on here defending Stephen A. Smith from First Take, but that is what I'm doing here. I was watching First Take Live when it happened, when Monica McNutt, put him on blast by saying that he could have been talking about the WNBA for three years. He was clearly hurt, bothered, and also shocked that she would attack him in that way. So what did Stephen A. do on first take? Nothing. He said, wow. He let her have it, but you could tell he was hurt. But you knew, you knew this wouldn't go unresponded to on his own podcast, for which he did. He brought up McNutt. He brought up Chene Ugumake. He brought up Andrea Carter, Kimberly Martin, Jamel Hill, Molly Curum, Carrie Champion, as basically having helped build their platforms and giving them the credibility on a true national level <clears throat> by being hosts or promoted experts on certain sports, as the reality is, and it's an unfortunate but true reality, most men don't take women seriously talking about professional or college sports, college football primarily, when they can't even play high school football. And they don't really take them seriously talking about men's basketball. But Stephen A. brings these women on as experts in basketball across the board. All of this stemmed from Kennedy Carter from the Chicago Sky, body blocking and elbowing Caitlin Clark away from the ball in what was clearly a dirty play that gets flagrant and or technical fouls called in the NBA every day. But magically, it wasn't called in the WNBA. So I guess the WNBA, that boring, brick-laying, layup-missing league, is now officially a more physical sport than the NBA because that was just a dirtbag play on her part. If you haven't seen it yet, take a look. Now, this fits her history, Carter, that is, of being a player who fits that dirtbag mode. She fits that Draymond Green. Really, she does. But to another level, because her history is so bad in the WNBA that she's been cut by two teams in like three years, despite being a pretty skilled player. One for wanting to fight one of her teammates and another for conduct detrimental to her team. This is her third WNBA team in four seasons. And she's back at it again with the dirtbag tactics and went on to say, that's that on, on that. Because besides three-point shooting, what does she bring to the table, man? This is talking about Caitlin Clark. In the post game, Kennedy Carter said she wouldn't answer any questions on Caitlin Clark. But then she spouts off this tweet. Sorry, you cannot have it both ways. If you aren't going to answer the questions, stay off social media. These women remain so damn petty, it's pathetic. And if you don't believe that there is hate going on in the WNBA and jealousy and resentment and frustration or whatever that word you want to use, this is an example of it. Because you would have no idea who Kennedy Carter was if it wasn't for that particular play. So Caitlin Clark brings eyes to your sport. Clark brings eyes to you. No one knew who Carter was before that moment. No one cared. 
Clark, Clark has brought more attention to the WNBA than any woman in the history of the game. And whether you like it or hate it, it's a fact. She also brings passing ability that is elite. She brings shooting that is elite. So I guess Steph Curry brings nothing to the table because besides shooting, even though he has transcended the NBA because of his shooting, he isn't the greatest passer. He is an awful defensive player, yet he is one of the greatest players of all time because he shoots the ball better than anyone in NBA history. That comment by Carter speaks volumes. It directly contradicts what Monica McNutt was saying. It shows the level of hate, the level of jealousy and animosity that so many of these women have in the WNBA towards Caitlin Clark. Monica McNutt then spent time kind of defending Carter and that the WNBA is physical and they throw elbows here and there and blase, blase. She says it's not a basketball play, which everyone can see, but then talks about moments of sportsmanship that she has had to get over. Come on, man. No, Monica, she was cut by two teams because her own teams couldn't deal with her crap. That is indicative of who she is. She goes on and say the league is physical. No, it's bordering on dirty now. Physical is not cheap shotting someone in the back who doesn't have the ball just because you feel like it after calling her a bitch. McNutt says maybe she falls into the definition of folks hating on Clark. Well, duh. She flat dismissed the woman's ability. Yes, a hater. Add her to the list. But let's talk about McNutt. McNutt has this thing she does, which is an easy tell. So I know she'd be an awful poker player. But you know, when she's irritated at comments made by Stephen A. or Shannon Sharp, she starts doing this head tilt like that. Mm -hmm. She does it every single time. And it's a tell. It's a tell that shows that she's irritated. It shows it every single time. She does that tilt like Shanae in the show, Martin. Mm hmm. Like, you're a professional. It's like it. She constantly seems offended by anything men say about the sport, yet she never played in the WNBA. She played at Georgetown. She was a good player at Georgetown, but she didn't play in the WNBA. She remains like she's living in a dreamland. The sport has never been watched. Not for the last 25 years. 20, that's not maybe 20, 20 years. The data is telling. When Caitlin Clark plays, people watch. When she doesn't, they don't. The numbers tell it. Clark goes to the New York to play the Liberty twice. They sell over 17,000 tickets in both games. Against anyone else, they're averaging 9,000. This team went to the WNBA Finals last year. Clark goes to L.A. and draws more fans in the Crypto.com arena than the Lakers did this year. More than LeBron James. LeBron James. When she isn't there, the Sparks draw 9,000. Clark goes to Seattle. There are 18,000 there. When she isn't, the Storm can't draw 9,000. The Indiana Fever average attendance last year was around 4,000. This year, it's over 17,000. Their attendance is 400% better than last year. This is the effect of this one player. No one else has this impact, period. Not one person. Angel Reese can go sit in the back because she is out of her mind if she thinks she has this impact. Because she doesn't. She can't even sell out the Band-Aid box, the Chicago Sky play-in, because they don't have enough cachet in Chicago to play in the United Center where the Bulls play. They have 2,000 or more empty seats every game in their 10,387-seat arena. But yet... Angel Reese gets on the mic this week and says, in 20 years, it will not, I'll just be, I'll be just as responsible for the success of the league as Caitlin Clark. Man, you're bugging. You are bugging. But that goes back to the delusion and the hate 
and the disdain and the jealousy. Monica McNutt goes on to say that first take was led that Monday morning by a non-basketball player. No, my dear, it was not. First take was led by Caitlin Clark. If Carter had done that to anyone else in the league, no one would have blinked because no one would have cared even for one split second. Not to mention, it likely would have been called the flagrant foul without a thought. The same way Alyssa Thomas was ejected for her play on Angel Reese, which actually was during a basketball play, trying to grab a rebound. And Reese goes down because she was off balance. And Thomas's hand went like this around Reese's neck and went to her towards her throat. And because of how she landed on her back, she was ejected. If Reese doesn't fall to the ground, it's a foul. Maybe a flagrant foul. But she's not going to be ejected. Yet the foul with Caitlin Clark by Kennedy Carter was a common foul. There was a ball out of bounds. Monica McNutt, the WNBA is on a watchable league that Clark got people to watch again because of how she plays. This year alone, the top five rated TV, the top five TV rated WNBA games by network are Indiana Fever games. I'm sorry, the top four. And then this, then there's another network. So 2.1 mil, 1.7 mil. 1.56, 724,000, 333,000. That's on ESPN2, ABC, ESPN, ION, and NBA TV. Now, this is where it gets funny. None of these games rank in the top 10 all-time in WNBA history. The WNBA was a great league when it first started. I watched it. People watched it. The top 10 WNBA games all of all time, rated on TV, all took place in 2000 or earlier. Cynthia Cooper, Cheryl Swoops, Lisa Leslie, Teresa Weatherspoon. Seven of those games were Houston Comets games, a team that doesn't even exist anymore. That's how far the WNBA fell off the freaking table and became so unwatchable over the years. Despite being promoted by networks, no one watched it. After 2000 to 2005, maybe, teams were being disbanded and, 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 you know, cut. How many teams have, have fallen off the map in the WNBA? I'm going to guess probably about 15. But Monica then goes on to say that there is jealousy probably. Probably? Probably? Really? No, it's clear as day. Carter showed you that with her words and her actions. There's absolute jealousy. There's absolute animosity. There's absolute disdain frustration, whatever adjective you want to use, the fact that McNutt keeps downplaying it shows that she's shilling and has a personal issue with the attention Clark draws herself. Why are you so upset that Clark draws this attention? Why? Because when she was drawn it last year to Iowa, hell, this year, because it was only two months ago, you're praising her. But now she's in the WNBA and you're bothered by it? This is what gets people so upset from the outside looking in. Rather than being honest, folks like McNutt will flat out lie and not admit the truth. That's why I say so many times to Nick when we're on here, I say, I want you to say it so the morons in the gallery understand that it's true. Because when everyone else wants to pussyfoot around with how to say it nicely because it's about women, the reality is the WNBA is trash. It's still trash. It's still a bad product. And I would venture to guess, in my opinion, that the women that played in the late two th- late 90s are better than the players that play today. They are, in my opinion. They just are. The game today, while it might still be more physical than the, the NBA now, it was more physical. The WNBA was a lot more physical in the late 90s. But the reality is many of these women in the WNBA, heck, even female media members, they can't stand the attention Clark is getting. They hate it to their core. They're jealous to their core. You lose credibility when you lie on national TV. She then goes on to say that Carter's behavior is not indicative indicative of the entire league. 
Has she been watching? I've watched Clark get cheap shotted left and right on basketball plays. An Aces player blocked her shot while proceeding to clock her with a forearm across the face while celebrating it and then argued that she didn't even foul her. The play, that play in the NBA is a flagrant foul automatically. It's not even a conversation. In the WNBA, it was with a common foul. There are multiple ridiculously over-aggressive cheap shot hard fouls that players have taken on Clark. Why? Because Clark won't get up and sock them in the face. Why? Because her teammates have shown they care so little about her that they won't fight for her as well, which shows the jealousy exists in the locker room too. Caitlin Clark needs a Draymond Green as a teammate. Watching Aaliyah Boston basically stand there and not go attack Carter after that dirtbag play is indicative of that. It's shocking. Her teammates have watched her get hit across the face over and over, and none of them have stood up to the, t- to the other team. They get punked. She even mentioned Candace Parker while ESPN showed a dirty foul on her. And you know what Parker did? She tackled the woman who did it. A fight broke out. This is being talked about because of Caitlin Clark, period. And Mama McNutt, McNutt today is a topic of discussion because she's on first take. Not because she broadcasts a Knicks game or she's the play by the, the, the color commentator for the Knicks. Not because she was on the ACC network five years ago, a network that has virtually no viewership whatsoever. The fact remains, Stephen A. Smith has helped provide many minority women a national platform on first take that they didn't otherwise have. Prior to making them moderators, gave them recognition and promotion of their brands, made them matter at a national level. So just because there are some cornballs out there that say, I've heard of Monica McNutt because you happen to work with her or live in New York City. I live in South Florida. The MSG network is not on TV down here. If it wasn't for first take, no one down here would know who the hell Monica McNutt was on a national level. This is why people get so hyperbolic and they make statements. Well, I've heard of her. Yeah, you've heard of her because maybe you live there. Do you know who Eric Reed is? Eric Reed is the play by is the is the play by play broadcaster for the Miami Heat for thirty five years. He is a local broadcaster. I guarantee you, basketball fans in California have no idea who Eric Reed is. No idea, but he's a wonderful, wonderful play by play guy. So yeah, McNutt may be very good at what she does on MSG on her show or whatever it is, I've never seen it, or covering the Knicks, great. But nationally, nationally, First Take is the most watched show on ESPN in the morning. Not just ESPN, but in sports. But to sit and act like Stephen A. Smith didn't provide these women an unbelievable platform to grow their brands that didn't otherwise exist before their opportunities on First Take, Come on, man. Come on now. It's that simple. He provided that. And if Monica McNutt never appears on first take again, which I'm sure she will appear again, otherwise Stephen A will be viewed as a petty bitch. It will devalue her career as she will be on TV in front of far less people than she's ever been over the past couple of years on first take. And if people don't understand that and want to pander to women, go ahead, but you're lying to yourselves. First take, whether you love it or you hate it, is the most watched morning show in all of sports, and it's not close. It averages almost 40% more viewers than Get Up, which comes on right before it, and double the viewers of Pat McAfee, which comes right after it. And it's also played three times a day. At 10, 12, and 2 on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN News, I believe is the third one. Whether you love Stephen A. Smith or not, or you hate him, he has more power at ESPN than just about anyone who aren't the executives who employ him. And he has given opportunities to people 
no one has ever heard of, like McNutt, like Molly Curran, like Carrie Champion, like Cheney Ogumake, like Nina Kynes, and Kimberly Martin, who were nothing more than print journalists before they got on first take. When Stephen A. Smith himself was a reporter for different newspapers, he didn't have the same cachet he has now, that he is now on, on TV every single day of the week on national TV on ESPN. And what McNutt did on that first take episode, that shit was foul. The reality is no one was talking about the WNBA three years ago. Why? Because no one gave a shit. And McNutt acting like she has covered the WNBA for 20 years or something like that is also bogus because she's only been in media for about five. And still, without Clark, no one would give a shit. Let one of these cheap shots injure her. And the masses who followed her to the WNBA will stop watching. Mark it down. But Monica McNutt, she owes Stephen A. Smith an apology, man. That's my belief, and I hate saying it, because I'm not a humongous fan of Smith. I do respect his grind, respect his hustle, respect how he came up, what all that stuff. <clears throat> but keep it a buck. He gave that woman credibility, along with a lot of these other people, men and women for that matter, because there are plenty of men who have been on his show. Ryan Clark. Got his entire, you know who Ryan Clark is beyond being a football player, but in media, because of first take primarily, he's a great mind. But first take gave him his shot. Stephen A. Smith gave him his fucking, gave him his shit. He gave him the opportunity. She owes him a public apology because first take is a hot take show. They talk about things their viewers are talking about. Like LeBron James, which is why LeBron James has talked about so much. And the Dallas Cowboys. Yet they barely say a word about baseball or hockey, even though Stephen A. Smith is a New York Yankees fan. And the Yankees right now are 43-19 and 19 and have the best record in baseball. Yet you've not heard one word about Aaron Judge leading the league in, in home runs and being on such a torrid hitting streak that he's blowing the cover off the ball. Or that Juan Soto is making so many waves in New York. He doesn't even talk about it. Why? Because it's not talked about by his viewers. And the NHL, the Stanley Cup starts in two days. How much hockey have you heard? None. Viewers want to hear about Caitlin Clark. Not the WNBA. It's just reality. So let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with Stephen A.? Monica McNutt. Was McNutt out of bounds or not? I'd love to hear your feelings. Leave me a comment, share this video, and certainly subscribe on YouTube if you haven't, and follow us on IG, Facebook, TikTok, Come On Now Podcast, and X at Come On Now Pod. Come on now. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.